How's it going, everybody? Welcome to the Music Production Podcast, the show where we talk about all things making music from the creative side, the philosophical side, and how to reach your fans is our topic for today. And in uh, line with that topic, I have Ben Mendoza, who's from Beat Chain, which is a new service which uh, is still in the beta phase, I believe, for, correct? Correct, yes. And um, he's going to tell us about Beat Chain. And, um, you know, I think we're in a very interesting time in our world where we're still trying to figure out how to leverage all of this, um, all of these angles to communicate with fans. So I'm interested to hear. Uh, about Beat Chain and how that's going to play a part. So welcome, Ben. Nice to have you. Thanks very much, Brian. It's great to be here. Um, yeah, so let me tell you a bit about Beat Chain. Uh, we've been around for uh, just a couple of years now. And um, how it came about was uh, uh, in my in my previous my previous life almost, in my previous firm before uh, for Beat Chain, I used to run a big tech firm uh, that specialized in very big data and analytics. Um, and I've also always been um, a bit of a muso, you know, uh, was a guitarist in my day when I had hair. Cool. <laughs> and and, and um, uh, towards uh, a couple of years ago, I met uh, a guy called Steve Jones, um, who has his own um, really good funk and soul band called Brother Strut. And um, we got we got talking. We actually had him uh, at one of our events at the old firm, you know, playing there. And we got talking afterwards. He was he was uh, basically raising money, um, doing some sort of crowdfunding and this sort of stuff. Uh, but what I really liked about how he had done everything is 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 he'd done it all through social media, all on his own. I mean, being he'd been in the music industry for twenty years, and he's seen you know, if you like what we might refer to as music industry 1.0. And and uh, and now we're basically building music industry 2.0. Mm -hmm. um, uh, because, you know, back in back in those days, as he was uh, telling me, you know, you, to, to really be successful, you were looking to sign a record deal and have promoters and managers and all those sorts of things. Um, but actually today, and, and in the way that... Uh, you know the music business has changed uh, in terms of how musicians can make their money and so on um, you know most of the money they're going to get these days is going to come from live performance mm. and ticket sales and, and maybe merchandising and that sort of yeah some will come from streaming of course uh, but you know as you probably know it's a very thin line at the top of uh, of of those guys that get a lot of money from streaming right. the rest you know and then there's all the rest right right <laughs> uh, and 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 he had some ideas of how he could use social media and uh, and ad placement and really what what I would call behavioral economics uh, mm -hmm. to uh, to promote his band brother strap you know build up a uh, a fan base and he got to like 130 140,000 fans um you know just doing this and selling out some very big uh, uh venues in london coco and places like this hmm. um and, and it was very impressive and we were talking about well, you know how do we take that and effectively productize it put it into such a way that we could make it scalable because one of the issues that he was telling me about is he spends all his day, you know, managing the adverts and looking at the way in which, he, you know, the different ad sets are working and this sort of stuff across the different platforms. You know, why can't we automate that? Why can't we take some of the tech that I, I bring from sort of the AI space as well and machine learning and, and, and put that together and bring those things together and put put together a set of tools that any musician could use, even though you may not be the most tech savvy musician. Mm -hmm. um, but also, you know, when we think about home production and, and home home producers, which is there's a growing uh, band, as you know, you know, those guys tend to be fairly tech savvy anyway. Um, it's still good to have a tool set that allows you to build attention and build engagement with a, with a particular fan base because you know, getting back to that earlier statement when we're talking about you're going to make most of your money from live performance, well, you're only going to make most of your money from live performance if you can sell tickets. Yes. And you can only yeah. sell tickets if you have fans that like what you do. Mm -hmm. So how do you, you know, if you go back to that point, you say, how do I get what I do out there to the masses 
And how do I know where they are and what they like and all those other things? So this is where the sort of science meets the music. Hmm. And so at BeatChain, what we've done is we've put together a set of tools um, and a way of looking at all the data that comes back from all these different areas and putting it together into a, a really easily consumable dashboard for anybody to use. And in fact, not only are we finding great uh, feedback from you know those bedroom musicians and, and solo artists and, and bands, but we're also getting a lot of interest actually from the established labels who want that sort of analysis on their portfolio of, of artists as well. And um, so what we do, goes from everything from having this this dashboard, if you like, which is scraping the, the world out there in terms of who you are. So if we let's take that Brother Strut example, it would look at all their fans on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and so on, brings it all together and, 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 and shows you in, 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 in a very easy to digest sort of dashboard who likes what, where they are, which is very important because if you want to plan a tour or if, you, you know, if, you, if you're going to go out there and do some live shows, you want to know, is it worth going to Birmingham because you know, you know, there's some nice venues there, but you know, is anybody going to turn up? Right. It, it, it makes a lot of sense to know exactly where everybody is, what they're, what they're tuning into so that you can you know, set up your, your event to, to really maximize its effectiveness. Mm-hmm. And so we have Launchpad, which is a um, a way in which you can schedule the posts that go out over the different channels automatically and, and just makes your life easier. So you can set up the posts in the appropriate formats. We have video, video editing um, in, as, as well as stills and, and, and video so we can crop them to the right length for the different the different platforms and so on. You don't have to worry about knowing about that. Um, you can schedule schedule them out on on a on an interface that looks a bit like uh, Hootsuite. I don't know if you know Hootsuite, but that's yeah. a sort of yeah a scheduling program. You sort of drag and drop in the the resources that you built, and then you know click go and watch it go out there. And then the really clever bit is the machine learning and AI behind behind the scenes that then tells you how well those posts are doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can see the dashboard on the main page at beatchain.com kind of showing yeah. you what's going on on SoundCloud, on Spotify, on Instagram. Exactly. And, and I see what you're saying about like scheduling your posts to the various social media networks. I, I use a service similar in that regard called Buffer. It's a lot like Hootsuite, I believe. And, yep. uh, and it, it's just so I can, you know, if I want to schedule out just some Instagram posts or... You know, rather than having to every single day sit down and spend the time, you can kind of oh. maybe delegate a, a, an hour or two a week and spread it out, which is nice. Yeah. But it so, doesn't have all of the um, kind of pullback with the location stuff. Um, I guess that's what what's uh, interesting about what you're doing is the analytics part. Yes, absolutely. That's that's the secret sauce, if you mm-hmm. like. That, that, that's the bit we're adding. So the other thing that we looked at is how much does it cost to use the other tools that are out there? And, mm-hmm. and there's some really good tools, Buffer being one of them. Um, but, you know, if you're looking at Hootsuite and MailChimp and, you know, Buffer and other things that are out there, you can – each of these cost quite a lot of money. Um, we're putting the, – the launch pad functionality is basically you get with the sign up there's no there's no charge for that mm-hmm. uh, there may be a limit in the number of posts that you can do uh in the free version but um uh at the moment there's been no for that at all there's no charge for the dashboard either um and, and what we're then doing is we're now adding distribution so uh, we've just uh, we're just signing a deal with fuga uh to to provide distribution so for so for 199 per month you know those artists that want to can distribute their, uh, their 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 tracks, their music, and so on to all the all the major uh, all the major platforms. And again, we use the analytics because we're plugged into those APIs. We bring back that rich set of uh, of data that's available and squeeze out of it all the interesting 
pieces that you want to know about because mm-hmm. there's so much data there. A lot of people don't know where to start. You've got to really mold it into what makes the most sense for, uh, you know, for, for the artist. And that's what we're very good at. Yeah, that's a big concern for a lot of people, myself even, um, where you're not just the musician anymore. You're you're the uh, you're a computer person now. You're you're a marketer. You're promoting. You, I mean, you're just wearing so many hats, and it's very hard to find the time to make your music to begin with. Correct, and, <laughs> and you know you're that. That's really the main message behind Beat Chain is that you know you can set it up and maintain it very easily. It's like having a personal assistant do all those things for you. Um, but on top of that, it's you know it's also having a sort of data scientist in, in the box that's looking at how the data is coming back and giving you guidance on what's working and what isn't working. So another area that we have is the ability to um, help people with paid advertisement. So, you know, if you want to get extra traction, as you probably know, you know, you need to you need to sponsor some 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 adverts. So, so you mean like and, boosting uh, your posts, like say on Facebook? It's, it's or... like a, a a supersonic version of that. But okay. the idea is you can create the post. Uh, you can there's a wizard that takes you through this process. Oh, says, I like wizards. <laughs> yeah. right. it's, it's designed for simpletons like me. Uh, so, That's good. So. So it's um, the idea is that you know basically it 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 sort of says okay well what genre are you are you trying to attract you know and you can you can make selections you know are there are there fans of similar bands that you want to you want to look at um, it it then asks you what geographies are you aiming at so you can go down to a sort of a city level um, resolution. Um, you know, are there shared interests that uh, you want you, you want to include in this in this search? So that you know, there may be all these people that like this particular music, but also like you know, hot rods or or, right. or drink or drink Corona or whatever it is that uh, you know may be an interesting com- combination. Um, and then you can it'll say, well, okay, well, how much budget do you want to put into this? And you know, most of the musicians I know don't have huge budgets to spend on on, on this um, if they're not you know sponsored by a label or something so you know maybe it's it's, it's a few dollars a day you know ten dollars a day or something we're going to put on that okay well the magic then happens you sort of press go the software automatic automatically creates hundreds of different ad sets um, across the platforms uh, with those combinations that you've asked for and it applies, and it'll take, say, the first five or six of, of those combinations, apply a little bit of your budget to it, send some adverts out there, and then starts looking at the, the feedback, and it starts moving around the, the, the budget. So it, it, if, if some of these aren't working, aren't getting any traction, it'll turn them off, and it'll apply the budget to the ones that are working better. Hmm. Okay, so it automatically optimizes the combinations that are going to bring you the most engagement. And we measure engagement not just by the fact that somebody clicks a like, but we measure the fact that, you know, they've looked at something more than more than one or two times. So, it, you know, this is this is all happening, happening in the background. Um, and. Again, you would have to manually spend so much time mm-hmm. doing it. I don't know if you've ever been into Facebook's ad manager and 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 messed around too much in there, just as an example. But you know, it can get very complicated in there, and and, and managing which is working and what's not working, and looking at the um, uh, the feedback. You know, doing that automatically is what machines are really good at. Right. So you know, we can use the tech to do that and really optimize the way in which you get. The fan base and the idea is to start with you know essentially cold traffic and then gradually move that up a an engagement pyramid to the point at which people become super fans and are asking you you know when are you playing in my town you know when or where can i go and see you what you know what merchandise do you have and so on and this is effectively ways of monetizing that audience for the for the artists and everything goes to them there's no middlemen taking any of that Hmm. you know any of that out so you're basically able to pro so i've done some facebook advertisement um i don't know handful of different ads 
but I, I can see what you're saying. There's a lot of ways you can sort of test to see what ad works best, what gets the most engagement. But uh, I've never done that because it, it's a lot of time and work. And the time I'm actually putting in to just make this ad is like all I have for it. <laughs> and then I'm on to the next thing. Um, I'm, I was kind of uh, curious, how does that, uh, how do you generate these uh, variations, I guess, is what, the word I'm looking for. How does well, that because, work? We, because we've asked you those questions during the wizard, mm-hmm. basically the software then sets up all the different combinations that are, that are possible for those areas and so on and tunes it from there going forward. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, and what we can do as well is, uh, and I think this is something that's going to become uh, that we're looking for the community to help us with as well is is we're building um, what we call a campaign manager that works with the ad placement and the uh, launch pad service so that you could we can say here's a template you know let's say you're putting on a show here's a template of the of the of a typical campaign that you would put out there all you need to do is go and create some content for this and it's maybe your music it may be a video that you've done with your iphone uh it, it could be a, a more polished video but the the idea is then you sort of drop those into the slots of the campaign and and again it takes care of pushing this content out across the appropriate platforms automatically and more importantly monitoring it to make sure that it's effective. So you're not, not just spending money unnecessarily. Um, you know, if it's not working, then it, it'll come back and tell you and turn it off. Mm-hmm. And I think that's really important for people because they, you know, so many people press the boost button or, or put more money into a campaign, but they don't really realize that it's not actually generating any more, uh, any more value for them. Right. You do get that advantage of it reaching more of your people, but um, that doesn't mean they're going to care <laughs> or interact. <laughs> That's correct. Yeah. I mean, at, at, the end, at the end of the day, mm-hmm. it, you know, we can't do anything about the content. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, Wait, so, you can't just take me and turn me into a star? <laughs> That's not what I'm getting uh, here. <laughs> but we can, give you, we can give you a much better chance mm-hmm. of, of finding the people that do like what it is you're doing uh, and uh, finding out where they are and, and setting up a, 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 a real engagement with them, which mm-hmm. I think is, is really important. Yeah, that's, that's the key word these days. It's not just reach anymore or followers. You can have, I mean, there's accounts all over the place with tons of followers, but it's a ghost town. There's no one there. So it's yeah. the engagement. Which is it important. is the engagement, absolutely. So, um, you know, I think that the, on top of these services, what we're what we're trying to do is then be a sort of a central place for artists to check in, see how their or uh, all, the, all their um, you know promotion is going, uh, how much attention they're getting, and that is all fed back into the dashboard. So mm-hmm. each of these different components all work together to give you that overall picture of of how successful you've been. Um, and you know what we what we intend to do a, again is feature some of these artists that are doing really well because we'll, we'll measure the ones that are, are, are really, um, you know, picking up engagement and, and um, we'll share, you know, with, with the rest of the community, the fact that, you know, this particular band is doing, you know, going great guns and this is what they're doing to achieve that. You know, maybe you should think about doing that as well. Hmm. So, you know, give people more ideas and, and share, that sort of uh, that, that sort of approach data with um, with other artists. Okay, so the the successful uh, styles or templates that other people are using are then kind of promoted to you as well. Yes. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. That's nice. Yeah. So the things that go well get passed on, and there's a lot of yeah. machine learning in here, as you said. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's right. There's, yeah. There there is a lot of that, and and you know, but. To be honest, the uh, I think we can we we can be pretty sure that most of the musicians don't really care um, how the clever stuff works. <laughs> <laughs> they they I mean, we do, but they they care about the outcome. Right. They 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 care about you know okay I I I've, feel, I've sold out this gig that's you know and I did it for the cost of uh, you know a hundred bucks yeah in terms of advertising and and 
you know, they we we've had results like that. You know, where we're selling out um, venues in London for some of the bands that we've worked with um, for you know literally a, a few hundred dollars, not even that. And that's because we've they've, they've spent the time building up the fan base, building up the engagement with those people that are saying, you know, let me know when you're going to be playing. I want to come. I want to buy your tickets. Mm -hmm. And that's that's really important. Well, it's definitely nice how things are um, collected into this one spot. I mean, most people I know, most musicians, uh, it's very common to hear like, you know, uh, the, there's this like uh, ickiness to the marketing part of it. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, it's yeah. not authentic. It's not, I'm, I'm an artist, not a, an advertiser or something along those lines. Um, but that that's true, and you know, from from some of the artists that that I've spoken to, uh, that do have, uh, you know, are signed to labels and so on, they've been a bit disillusioned by the fact that the label wants them to do something that slightly different, mm -hmm. the the way they would like to have approached their their, their marketing and their and, and their fan base, and 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 with Beachain, you're you're in complete control of this yourself, so you've got nobody telling you. We're giving advice. We're saying this is what works and this is what doesn't work. But um, you know, in terms of the content and the way you want to approach it, it's completely up to you. All we're doing is making it more automatic and much more cost-effective. Uh, you know, better use of your hard-earned cash. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that's true. If a label is putting some money towards you, it seems uh, you know as much as we hate to admit it as the artist it it seems fair they should have some say in how the direction is is you know planned out a little bit sure and normally but, they're very good at it you know i mean i, I didn't mean to, to, to be oh, just no. labels in in any way in fact it, i think that 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 what's important i'm sorry to interrupt you there no, no. Um, what's important is that you know if you do want to eventually end up with a label and, and most people probably do then isn't it great to be able to go to them with a huge fan base already built mm -hmm. rather than just sending them a demo and saying, Oh yeah, listen, listen to our great music. You know, isn't it great to be able to say, you know, we've played 15 shows around the country and we've sold them all out and people are asking us to come back. You know, it's, 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 it's an A&R guy's dream. I would have thought. Yeah. There's a, definitely a misconception about uh, getting signed to a label. You're playing in your garage and, the A and R yeah. guy is just driving by, and then he picks you up in his <laughs> private jet. And it's, I mean, they're a business too. So this is, this is what you have to do to be attractive to a label. Because I, I don't think, uh, I think at the end of the day, you might even have the most amazing art to give. But if it's not a product that they can sell, if it's not going to make money, it doesn't matter. It's not for them. No. That's true. At least if That's you're true. having success this way or whatever way you can, you can go to the label and say, hey, what we're doing is working. We are making money. Yeah. Well, well, I mean, we, we've been lucky enough to work with 11.7 uh, in New York. Uh, I don't know if you know Alan Kovac, who who runs that uh, that label, and, and we're working with a few of their artists. We got slightly involved in, in some promotion for Motley Crue and mm. uh, The Dirt, Netflix movie, uh, but also, um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we also got involved with a, a great um, artist over there called Just Loud, mm -hmm. um, and uh, we've been helping you know, with using the beat chain technology to do promotion for them, uh, and also a, a UK band called Bang Bang Romeo. Uh, we did some uh, again promotion with them using you know beat chain to, to technology to push it out there to the fan base, and now they're just starting um, a support role with Pink, so mm, they're. Uh, nice. Yeah, they're, they're doing really well. And you know, I, I can't say that I think that was already arranged before we were involved, to be honest. So I can't claim that that was Beach Chain that did it. But we certainly have, you know, great data back from the uh, postings that we made for all those bands. And you can see how that engagement has grown on the dashboards and where those people are. And we've now got a, you know, a whole, whole new set of people that are interested in knowing what we're doing next. Mm. Nice. And, and I think what something like this is nice for is for the artists that have the trouble 
being self-promoting, which can feel kind of like, uh, I, icky is always the word I, I come up with, but it's definitely <laughs> a nice way to kind of um, do it all at once, get it done in one shot. But also to, I like that it selects what's working best because yeah. even if, um, you know, people aren't clicking on it, you, they don't, I don't want to see things I don't want to click on in my feeds. <laughs> so, and there, and I know when I, uh, it's, it's always kind of like this feeling like, should I be doing this? Is this right? Is this the best way? So to eliminate that yeah. definitely sounds like a nice feature that I, my conscience can live with a little bit. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, the sort of thing that could be interesting, uh, especially to, you know, home producers as well as artists is, you know, the richness of the Spotify API. When we get data back on streams that have, that have taken place, we actually see, you know, where skipping takes place, mm. you know, which, you know, how many seconds in the most engagement was and so on. So if you're going to be, if you've got a track and you, you want to do a bit of promotion, you know, using BeatChain, you can you can find out, you know, which 20 seconds of that track is the most engaging mm. to use with that, you know, with that promotion, which is really important. You know, if you, there's a piece of the track where everybody jumps out, you don't want to use that piece. But right. uh, it's that it's that sort of analysis of the data, which I think not many people would go into, but it, it's very valuable when you apply it. Oh yeah, that's that's great to know. Uh, like YouTube will do that, tell you kind of where people drop out of your videos, and that's nice to know. Sure. And uh, yeah. I've looked at that a little bit. I mean, you can really go down the rabbit hole with it, but um, there are definitely a lot of times where I say, "Oh, I get why they left there." <laughs> I was kind of going rambling or whatever, but it's it's nice to have. Um, I think that. It's a, a lot of people aren't aware of just how much information there is for you to even keep track of. And no, I, like, I didn't know right. Spotify put out that information about when the track gets skipped myself. Yeah, um, you know, if you have the you have the right access to the to the APIs, you get to see all that. And and of course, if you're a big artist, um, there can be millions of of streams a day. Mm. Um, so that starts to get to, you know, reasonably big data that you've got to sift through and, and have a look at. And again, that's why for me, the, the important challenge of getting involved with Steve and, and putting together beat chain, um, obviously I, I brought the sort of tech team with me that, that, that write all the software behind it, but it was when we look at the amount of data that's going to be involved, what we build has to be very scalable so that, for example, if a new guy signs up and, and, he, and you should, Try this yourself, Brian, when you get a chance. You know, if you want to sign on and, and have a free account on, on BeatChain, when you sign up and put in the name of your act or your band, within, I think it's 40 seconds, we've gathered all the data from, 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 from all the, all the social channels and we've shown you the dashboard. Okay. That's so <laughs> it, it's, not like, it's not like you have to wait till tomorrow or a month's mm -hmm. time to see that dashboard. It's less than a minute. Yeah. And you'll have all that information in front of you. And it is, it's pretty impressive. In fact, what we did is we put a little video together to say, you know, welcome to Beat Chain. While it was doing it, nobody ever gets to the end of the, the video because it's, it's, it's ready to display before that, mm. before that finishes. So yeah, having really good, reliable software is something that I think will distinguish, or hopefully will distinguish Beat Chain uh, from some of the other. Uh, you know, similar products in the marketplace. But um, yeah, the, there's a, a very rich data set out there that can be can be used for the benefit of, of, of the smaller guy, mm. which is what we're trying to do. Well, with Buffer, they do tell you which posts are doing well and they kind of rank them all. But yeah. for me to understand why is a whole other research project. That's, yes. you know, I can say, oh, that, they like that one. Maybe, I don't know, my dog was in the picture. <laughs> you know, maybe they, that was <laughs> what was good. I don't know what it was. But uh, it, to really like go through it and figure it out is, is something like, I just, if I do that, I'll never be able to do anything else. <laughs> yeah, no, that's true. And, 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 and me too, I don't know how to do that. But we've got, you know, we've got guys in the team that, that we, we double PhDs in, in, in neuroscience and, and, and data science and this sort of stuff. And they, they're the people that 
actually look at that, that that information and can infer using different algorithms that this is what's making that post good and, and tell you about it and say that's what you should do next. And that's what we really hope to be able to do to people to say our experience shows us that actually taking a, a, a lo-fi video with your iPhone of the band setting up and doing, you know, just having a chat and, and being approachable is actually much more engaging than spending all your money on how, on a shiny produced video of you playing some track. Right. You're going to get them, you, you know, you can still have that, but that's for later on. Yeah. You know, we've, we've got artists like Mike Mayfield, brother strut uh, and uh, Duke who are a beatbox band over, over here in the UK. Well, over there in the UK, so I'm in Florida. Um, <laughs> and, and, and basically, you know, they've had material that's gone through the, the big chain process, which actually goes viral. And in terms of having, you know, many millions or over a million views. Um, and it's knowing basically what to do in which order. Uh, it, it, and it's just providing some advice to these guys to say, you know, this is the sort of thing that's going to get you noticed. This is the sort of thing that's going to draw draws people attention to you. And um, it's different for different genres, but it, it's, it, it's basically um, really nice to know what made it work. You know, work as you're saying. Um, a lot of people don't realize that. Okay, this was this went viral. We don't know why. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I look at like some of my top videos, for instance, and I really sometimes I'm just like I have no idea why that one is the one getting all the views. It's <laughs> it makes no <laughs> sense to me. Uh, some of them are obvious. It's just a more appealing topic or whatever. But sometimes yeah. I'm just I don't know. I don't know why no one watched this video. I thought that was the best one, but <laughs> that's nice to get that feedback. Okay. Yeah. So you'll certainly get that sort of that sort of inference from the blockchain technology. Now, I have a question that, like, because this is obviously very geared to uh, musicians, artists that are, you know, like I mean, Spotify, SoundCloud are very yeah yeah centric to that. That's um, myself as a music person <laughs> for, for this weird time. I'm not really trying to um, go on tour anymore. I'm not really trying to make my song, but I'm doing my podcast. I'm doing a lot of teaching. I'm doing, uh, I do sound packs for other producers to use. And I'm wondering if a tool like this could be valuable to someone like that, someone like me, or, yeah. or even like other kind of like uh, social media personalities um yeah if you have any no, thoughts I on think, that. I th yes i do i think because you can do the sort of the hyper targeting you know be very precise in the, in who you're looking for who you're going to serve your information to across those social platforms um i think this is useful for 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 anyone really um and uh, and I think it will automatically again tune itself to tell you which part of the targeting is bringing you the best the best results. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you don't have to be selling tickets or, or merchandise and that sort of stuff. You you just want to engage with the, the with the right sort of audience and put something into their feed that they're going to say, okay, I'm interested in this. Um, you can do that very very you know very accurately mm. with uh, with the, the beat chain technology. Mm. In fact, yeah, we've had we've had interest, funnily enough, outside of the music um, circles. So from from fashion and sport and from other places as well, we're also interested in doing the same sort of thing. But yeah, I I, I believe that um, you can you know you can be very successful and and much more um, you know get a much better result by being careful away and careful in the way you target things rather than just saying oh, okay i'm going to splash some money on some adverts mm -hmm. one one of the questions i sort of wanted to ask you about it has to do with this whole icky feeling about being a marketer <laughs> kind yeah. of thing uh you know compromising your art which as i've noticed from uh younger kids i teach high school english so i'm i i uh have that perspective i think and 
they like we used to have the term sellout when I was young. That band sold out. They're doing a Doritos commercial now, and you know what happened? It was, <laughs> uh, yeah. But I don't really see that so much with with the new generation. They kind of like, hey, they got to make their money, and they, they're fine with it. Um, I guess like uh, my question. I don't have a question, or just am I talking? <laughs> I, I'm just wondering, like, uh, if these are sort of like um, generated templates, does this take away from the authenticity of the artist communicating to their fan? For instance, like sometimes I feel a little funny buffering my posts, you know, just like, does it feel fake? Am I cheating or something? Um, or does this make it more so, more real because you're tuning it better? I don't know. Yeah, I, I, well, I, I'm... It's an interesting point. I, I think that, again, what we're doing is trying to build the right type of campaign template. The content, as I say, is down to, down to you, and, 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 and that's, that's where, whether it's real or not in, in terms of the, the content that you're putting out there. Um, I don't think there's anything, you know, from for, for, for where I sit, I understand that, um, you know, there is this sort of icky feeling around marketing and, and, and so on. But, you know, if you are going to build a fan base and, and you want to share your, your, your talents and, and, and your output with them, at some point you are going to want to harvest that mm -hmm. and, and, and sort of bring in some, some sort of uh, reward for all the hard work that you put out there. Um, you know, the people that end up with the Doritos adverts, um, probably weren't very successful necessarily in hmm. in terms of what they, they 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 originally went for and then that's what they've ended up with uh, and that's a sad really um you know we're not we're not just saying you know do anything to to to, to sell stuff uh, I, I think we we we're, we're basically saying look you know it's in your hands we're trying to give you the, the best tools that will give you the best chance of being successful and making a living. Because, you know, I know, I know a bunch of musicians that are incredibly talented session guys and they still have to, you know, work two jobs. Mm -hmm. They're not making, they're not making a living out of, out of, you know, playing in, you know, the sessions and so on. They're having to work in a restaurant or do other things. And that's for me is, is really sad. If they could, get to a point at which they get much more uh, of, of the revenue that's generated coming straight back to them rather than going through a whole bunch of other middlemen that they are either doing promotion or management and so on, then that's got to be better for them. And, and that's really what we're trying to do. Yeah, I agree uh, with you because, I mean, I, I have had that feeling before of like awkwardness about marketing, but I think... You know, and I do hear it too with some of my students. And I think my answer lately has been get over it. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. like, listen, if like you, if this, if you were going for a job, you would promote yourself in the same way. You would, you're, 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 um, in this case, you have to be the fighter for your own career and you have to, um, be willing to put yourself out there. And that's, that's. I don't think it's inherently evil <laughs> to to do that. It <laughs> it's part of what it is to be an artist these days and to be a musician. And, and a lot of the these new jobs that are coming up for even like tastemakers and influencers is um this is a necessary aspect of it. Just like uh, any job has certain prerequisites that you need. Sure. Yeah. No. Absolutely. I, I think you know you can play in your bedroom. And and nobody hears it, mm -hmm. um, yeah. or you can you know that's that's. But most people I know, you know, they they wake up in the morning and they think, you know, one day I'm going to walk out onto that massive stage and there's going to be, you know, hundreds of thousands of people in the audience all singing my lyrics, and you know that that sort of vision is is, is what they have. They want to get there. I mean, very few of them will. We all know that, but we're trying to give them a better chance of being heard and being heard by the people that like what they do and they're targeting those people that like what they do a lot of people they don't i don't know if they want to get there they want to be there they're not willing to do the getting part is that's yeah. everything really but um 
I, I think you have to really let go of that and just like think of it more as maybe just like a confidence in what you're doing. You have to be your own biggest champion, really. There's no sure. one that's going to come swoop you off and take you there in their private jet. <laughs> <laughs> well, you never know. I, th I think, you know, what we, as again, one of the things that we've got an idea to do uh, at Beat Chain is we, we'd like to have a sort of uh, a Beat Chain TV channel mm -hmm. uh, on YouTube or something. And, you know, we're going to showcase some of the some of the people with their permission, obviously, you know, with their, uh, the content they put up there, the people that are doing the best, you know, give them a chance to be seen. And they'll be seen by our customers that are in the label world as well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we, as I said, you know, we on, on, on the other side of, of what we're doing, we're, we're, we're providing a, a, a different set of services to some of the independent labels. And, you know, we've got no axe to grind. It's great to, to promote people and push them out there. And if they can go up and, and, and have another vantage point to be seen from, that's great. And, and we'd love to do that. Hmm. Now, is Beat Chain designed more around one artist or is this something maybe like a record label or collective could get involved in too? Or is it more separate? No, well, it's, it's, there's two sides of it, if you like. There's the there's the B, the B to C side, which is the um, the you know, beat chain for artists, which is very much designed for individuals to use or bands to use to to promote themselves and 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 uh, do all the things we've talked about. And then there's a different sort of bundle of services which we've actually branded internally as Fan Coda. It's another sort of internal brand that is is really for managers and mm. labels that have a number of artists under in their portfolio uh, and uh, it does some other clever science you know sciencey stuff as well in terms of uh, you can put all the artists in your uh, in your portfolio into into the software and it will run a multilinear regression and it will show you what the for for, for the the number of followers that they have it should show you where they should be on a sort of popularity um and success line and you'll find that you know some fall below the line and some are above the line and that's really interesting uh, because then you can go and say either we need to invest more in some of these uh, uh some of these guys who are below the line or we can we, we'd like to understand why are these people with fewer followers actually doing better mm. um and you know, looking at the data in a slightly different way, um, but getting some, some other sort of really interesting actionable insight from that. And, and um, you know, so, so we've got services which are available for, for, for both sides here. Yeah, I can see how it can be helpful to understand what's working for one, might work for another, might not work for a different type of Why artist. not? Yeah. But, yeah. But, um, yeah, I think like, certain kinds of music definitely have like certain like cultural things to it to kind of like you said like the, they they live here and they drink corona or they <laughs> love doritos <Yeah>. maybe <laughs> whatever well we we've seen that data come to life which is quite interesting you know what one of the things we found for the beatbox trio in the uk was that the their followers tended to be males between 18 and sort of 35 and they really were into a lot of them were into car modding Hmm. Um, and, um, you know, when we, we put on some gigs for them in London and there they were all turning up in their Citroen Saxos with the, uh, with the fluorescent lights under the, uh, you know, uh, under the sides and all this sort of stuff with modifications on their cars. And, you know, it, it actually <clears throat> proves to be real. And, and that was very interesting to see. Was that something you were able to figure out through Beat Chain or was that just an observation at the uh, yeah, it shows. was. I mean, by looking at the affinities, you know, what other sites that these people uh, are also visiting, uh, you, you can infer quite a lot of in, information about a particular following or cult, almost, mm -hmm. and and that's really important. So the software can look at that and then, you know, retarget more people that are like that because we think those people are going to like your music, and that's how we make these people more successful and build up their fan base. It's just interesting to see those people turn up at the gigs yeah now does that mean um it's 
it's looking at information, say like Facebook, like people that like your post, they also liked this page or they're in on Instagram. They like this, they follow this person or this company to, to the, to the extent that we're allowed to do that. Yes. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So there's some very clever stuff going on in there. That's interesting. And I mean, that's, I mean, obviously that's happening all over the internet. I mean, anytime I look at anything on Amazon, it shows up everywhere else I go. Yeah. <laughs> they're hounding me for all this. Stuff. It's like, you know, they got to dangle it in front of me. But uh, I never really thought about that as um, a connection for artists because, I mean, that could be really interesting, uh, even just preparing tours or, um, some sort of collaboration with a company or a, say, a, I don't know, a comedian or something that who knows? Yeah. Car yeah, absolutely. modding. <laughs> well, the, the other thing that we found was interesting is, you know, along those lines is that artists obviously want to play bigger and bigger venues if they can. I mean, it's, you start off down the local pub or whatever, and you've got you know, 25, 30 people there, and then you, you're sort of moving up. When you're getting to the, the bigger venues, you know, 3,000 to 5,000 um, capacity sort of venues, then it's unlikely for any of these smaller bands to fill that on their own. Mm -hmm. So you're going to put a, um, you know, a selection of bands on uh, to, so they can each bring a thousand of their fans each sort of thing to, to, to fill it up. They all get the benefit of playing a bigger venue and that's great for their, their confidence and their, you know, uh, sort of taking them forward. But again, it makes a lot of sense then to put bands together where their fans will typically like the other types of music as well. Yeah. They don't have to be exactly the same genre, but we can tell, okay, these bands would work well together. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they have, they have the right number of fans in the right geographic location to be able to, you know, sell that number of tickets or whatever it is. So getting that sort of information back really helps you be successful when you put these events on. And, and that's what we're trying to provide to people, that sort of level of intelligence. So that's something Beat Chain can offer is say I'm, yeah. I'm looking to do some show. It'll give me kind of like artists that might work out for that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. If they're, you know, other Beat Chain artists, that is yeah. obviously we would only know about, them if they're on the beat chain on right. roster i mean we don't have that many yet I mean, as you say we're in the we're in the beta phase we have a couple of thousand um people signed up uh we've uh, as we're going through the beta testing we've got over a, a hundred different people logged in now sharing you know actually using it in anger um and that's about to grow hopefully quite dramatically as we release distribution and some of the other the other services on the back of it, but we've been testing it for two years, mm -hmm. so it's not something that you know we just taken out of the box. So let's try this. It's it's a very solid um, and, and uh, uh, robust product which has had a lot of testing. Mm. I like that. I mean, just playing locally and uh, doing small little tours myself. Um, it's it always works better when there's some sort of connection between the bands. I mean, when it's just sort yeah. of random people thrown together, they they just watch the one band and leave. But when it's friends or like um, you know, there's some overlap, a lot of times yeah. those fans get converted into your fans and and vice versa. Yeah. So, and it's absolutely. a much it's a much better like kind of communal experience as well. So that's exactly what we're trying to helpful. do. You said it's been like two years in uh, trial phase so far, testing. Yeah, I mean we've been we, Beat Chain's been 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 together now for for two years. In terms of this software, it's really the last um, six or seven months that it's actually been out there uh, being being used properly um, by serious artists uh, like Bang Bang Romeo and Just Loud and, and those guys, and also Brother Strutt and Duke and Mike Mayfield. Um, you know, Mike Mayfield is, is a great example of somebody that we uh, actually created a brand from from scratch. You know, he's an excellent musician um, and singer, and we've uh, basically built him a brand and uh, uh, yeah, issued an EP, which has done very well. He's on Spotify and so on, um, and he's now you know starting to, to line up his own gigs. Hmm. So. It's um, you know, we wanted to try it with with established artists 
uh, artists that were just starting out and make sure that it it was appropriate for everybody hmm. oh that's interesting so you kind of like grew him out of the out of the uh algorithms yeah. and intelligences <laughs> that's right i mean not not to say you know he's he's, really like, my he's a David. musician and right but i, I understand he's, what you're saying he's a brilliant guy so yeah. uh, <laughs> well you, you can't know, you can't grow his abilities and his talents no. <laughs> that's but right that's nice so yeah. what what are the, like kind of timeline do you think you have before it's out of the beta and it's in official form or is that really just a pen? i would say in in by the end of the summer oh yeah you know it, it should be it, it should be you'll you'll be seeing you'll be seeing a lot more sort of advertising for beat chain uh, appearing using our own technology <laughs> uh, um in the in the in the summer months we're going to start sort of pushing it we wanted to make sure it was absolutely ready and it is um and uh, so, so really, by I would say by the fall, it'll 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 be out there with with everything, everything ready to use for everybody. Okay. Um, do you have any information, or do you? I don't know if you know this yet, but as far as like pricing, what that's going to look like? Sure. I mean, there are. I imagine the way we decided and... there was. We're still sort of testing some of that, but the the way we've decided to do it is we want we want to make it as affordable as possible. We want it to be value for the musician, mm. um, and you know at the same time, you know, without being too icky, you know, we've got to cover some costs as well on our of side. Uh, but it has to be a win win sort mm -hmm. of situation. So to sign up to Beat Chain is absolutely free. If you sign up to Beat Chain, you will get the launch pad, you will get the dashboard um capability um and you'll get the campaign manager which is the uh, sort of templates all that all that capability is basically available to you from the get-go without any cost distribution because we have to cover the cost of of, of that on our side we we've, we're starting to pitch that at 199 per month unlimited distribution mm. okay that's very not everybody's gonna it's it's we think it's 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 affordable, I and mean, it was the price point. It was the lowest price point we could get to where it made sense for us to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, if you do tickets, if you're going to be selling tickets for your events, then we're going to be providing some some ticketing system um, that we're building ourselves, um, and you know we will probably take a percentage of ticket sales. So you know it. It's going to be in the range sort of three to five percent of, of, of ticket sales. The rest of it all goes to the to the artists, and that's really just admin for for, for keeping the system going and so on. We're going to do deals with people that you know can provide merchandising. We're not a merchandising company, but we can obviously make those connections. Um, so the idea is we want to put as many features and, and, and capabilities together in the one place so you don't have to log on to this and then log on to that and log on to the you know 15 different systems to do all this you can do it all from the from the beat chain platform and that way the data that comes back which is the bit i'm interested in can be aggregated together and shown to you and and, and we can get really interesting insights out of that not only for you as an artist but also across the music industry actually and and be able to share what's going on generally with uh, uh, based on real data not not guesswork yeah. of what's actually working what isn't working and i think that's going to be very exciting i that does sound exciting because it's really gonna grow and become more intelligent if if that's how it works right it'll have more yeah. and more data to work off of yeah absolutely absolutely so um and you know we're completely independent um, and fr from that point of view means that we've got no, we don't have any icky agenda, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, uh, but it's, you know, that again, it comes from, it comes from just wanting to do this. It's fun to do this stuff. And, and it's, it's really great to, to be able to give people guidance to show them what's working and what's not working and, and make the most of their hard earned dollars. To say okay mm -hmm. you know we're going to turn off those adverts that don't work we're just going to concentrate on the ones that do you know try this next time because this band over here did this and this was this was really successful um you know sharing that information and, and getting a community together that will, will hopefully share 
their experiences uh, as well. We'd like to build up that sort of beach chain community uh, idea as well. Yeah, that that's cool, and I think that would probably be nicer for the end user, the people that are advertised to as well. Um, yep. You know, like I think I'm getting over this, but it was definitely weird at first when you realize like the computer knows more about you than you know that you, than you oh, yeah. even know about yourself. It knows every product you looked at, but I think I like that better than getting advertisements for things that have no relevancy to my life at all correct um so if i'm gonna be contacted for i might like this band or something then that's that's better i think for the general like um you know climate of the internet experience <laughs> where you're yeah, not just kind of yeah. like running into uh advertising over population or something like uh, no, that's true, and and I think I think that's really important in that when people get something from Beat Chain, I don't want them just to think that this is more noise. Yeah, you know, this is actually something that they're interested in and something they'll get value from. So, would that post be branded in any way? Does it say like "powered by Beat Chain" or anything? No, it doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't. But nice. but uh, I mean, it, it could be. But it's, it's yeah. we have no we don't have an ego there. You know we. <laughs> We are happy if the if, if the people that do well talk to their friends about the fact that it, it, you know they they they're making progress using Beach Chain and the tools that we have, and it will be a, a continual improvement process. You know, they, you know the the software will just get better and better over time. Then that's that's all the payment we need. Mm -hmm. Nice. And so, what kind of challenges do you see for the future for Beach Chain and? Um making this all once you exit the beta phase and hit the ground here well we're going to need some community management so um you know we like to talk to people obviously we're hoping to get tens of thousands if not hundreds of thousands you know you, know, you never know millions of people eventually using beat chain that would be fantastic uh, but even though you know we, we start with a few thousand you're still going to get a lot of people who need education, who need a bit of help. Mm -hmm. So we're putting together some educational videos on how to use the beat chain tools at the moment. And we'll, we'll be sort of feeding those out. But again, you know, we want to be as open to feedback as we can be. So we're going to put together some community managers who can, you know, look at the feedback that we get and, um, help improve the product and the service. Hmm. So that that that's going to be a challenge with that many users if we get, you know, if we do get up into the hundreds of thousands. So you've got to make sure how you know we do that very efficiently. And that's something we want to think about. Right. So that's the uh the type of data that you kind of need a real person for, I guess, right? <laughs> yeah, sometimes you yeah. sometimes you actually need real people. <laughs> <laughs> that emotional connection with the uh, artist. Yeah. But that's good. That's great yeah. too to do the training stuff because again, like there are a lot of people that have just, oh, I think about myself, like all the things I had to learn because of music and to get yeah. my music out there. I'm designed web pages. I've yeah, you know, the list goes on. I've learned how to use computers and all kinds yeah. of stuff that you don't really necessarily make the connection for. But well, the, the, well that's something we've done as well. Is uh, again for a very small charge, uh, we've got a web uh, a website builder uh, uh, capability within BeatChain. So if you're a completely new band and you need to put a website together, this will you know with a sort of you put in a few details about your band, it creates for you a website which has all the appropriate facebook pixel logic in it and all that sort of stuff the advertising links into your dashboard in beach chain automatically and so on and so forth so it saves you know if you're non-techy it saves mm -hmm. you a lot of time and effort and it's very simple for us to provide um mm -hmm. so again we want to pass those sorts of things on is there any sort of uh email marketing or um platform or is this all mostly social media kind of thing um, no, we'll 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 manage mail lists as well, uh, sort of like yeah. a Mailchimp type thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll have our there's a beachain version of that as well. I imagine that, you'll be that's not that's not available yet. Okay. Um, that's that's one of the features we're still we're still to release. Uh, the you know we, we'll sort of be drip feeding the features in over the 
the, the coming months. But as I say, by the end of the summer, they should all be there. Okay. And I imagine you're applying the same AI to that, what works as an email? Uh, why not? Yeah. Absolutely. You know, that's what we do. I think that if, if you like that, that's the, that's the difference, I think, in, in terms of our approach to this is we don't just want to gather the data. We want to do something with it. We want to be able to take that in and show you some, you know, interesting insight out of that data. And, and I think that's where we add value. I like that. I mean, I was recently asked about my mailing list and what posts work. And I was able to say, well, this one got like 10% people clicked on links and opened it. And this one too. And <laughs> I have no idea why. <laughs> yeah. But I also well, like that you're, I mean, when we think of like uh, big data, uh, you know, especially with, in the conspiratorial mindset, you know, yeah. it's something that we as the people don't ever have access to, but it's nice that this is bringing it to you, to the artist to say, hey, this is what your data is. This is what you can do with it. Yeah, absolutely. And and you'll see how much of it is publicly available because when you, as I say, when you log on within, a, within 30, 40 seconds, we'll have gathered it all and put it all together in a dashboard for you. You should try it. You should really try that, Ryan. It's pretty impressive. That might be worth it <laughs> just just the bug out i might get out of that <laughs> but that's yeah. super cool i yeah. think i think it sounds very interesting and fun and I, I think for a person that um doesn't want to you know dedicate their whole life to sorting out this information i, I know i have access to some of this in various platforms but it, it's just there's just no not enough hours in the day for me <laughs> or, or really like desire. I, I, it just, uh, it's a lot. So I, I like the idea of it all coming to one spot and kind of, uh, taking me through it. Yeah, no. So that's exactly why we did it. You know, I mean, some of the people I know in the music industry, I would just say are lazy. <laughs> you know, I think that's probably the best description of them. Other people are, are try really hard and and spend a lot of time doing it too. The idea of this is it doesn't really matter which one of those people you are, as long as you can type in a few basic details and and you know how to you know use the use your phone and use the uh, a desktop or whatever, then you're there. Mm. It's um it, it's going to save you so much time and bring you so much benefit. I kind of made a decision years ago when I first was doing my YouTube channel and um, I, I saw all the statistics and data and I started going through trying to figure it out and then I, I realized I wasn't making any videos anymore. <laughs> and I, I said, you know what, I'm going to just kind of trust the content and put out the content and I'm not even going to worry too much about the followers, this and that and the That's stats. But this seems like a way to make it a little more accessible. <laughs> yeah. Without yeah, having to that's right. learn a whole new career, really. I mean, there's there's people that make their whole living off of that stuff, analyzing that data for artists. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, and that's and that's what we're trying to help people do. Yeah. You know, make more money and be more successful. All right. That's it. So okay. can we send people to beatchain.com then? Oh, please do. Please do. At the moment, they'll be asked to sign up, and then we're inviting people to uh, to join the beta program. But that, as I say, and, and the more the merrier at the moment. So please, please okay. invite them. So there's and, no uh, and, restriction really at this point? No. Great. No. No. Well, there you go. It's worth trying. Free to try. You get your, your We get the launch pad, the dashboard, the campaign manager. You do. So that gives you a good taste of what you're going to be able to do with BeatChain. Yes, it does. Certainly does. Yeah. Hmm. So uh, we really look forward to hearing feedback from people as well. We love we love to get feedback and and things that we haven't thought of possibly that we can add to it. You know, right. it's, it's 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 built for artists. Hmm. Well, nice. That's good to hear. And I I appreciate the effort you guys are putting into this to. Uh, make the uh artist journey a little more <laughs> navigable is that a word navigable navigable yeah. whatever but yeah. you know to make it um to put empower the artist to have some of this information I, I think that's a really good thing and and it seems like um you know this again like we mentioned like we're going into this whole other music 2.0 thing um 
we're all trying to figure out how this all works into the the big equation and at least here we get the information we have a lot of the data so i i appreciate that personally so thank you for your work <laughs> well thank you very much it's, it's it's a pleasure talking to you yeah okay so head over to beatchain.com everybody sign up see what it's all about i'm gonna do it i want to see how fast they can aggregate all of the data on me <laughs> yeah well what will happen exciting. to begin with brian what will happen is we I'll tell the guys to send you a, an invitation to log in. At the moment, we're asking people to sign up on the list, okay. and then we're in, we're inviting them in in batches. So until you get an invite, that but these days that should only be perhaps one or two days after you've signed up. Okay, you'll get an invitation. But I'll I'll I'll, I'll, I'll put you to the top of the queue, Brian. Oh wow, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> well, cool. No problem. Um, yeah, so Ben, thanks so much for your time. Thanks for your hard work on this and um, empowering us artists. I appreciate it. Great. Thank you very much for your time, too. And everyone else out there, have a great day. Take care.